One of the things about um, an education, being responsible for your own education, there's no better way of improving that than actually by reading books. Books contain a fantastic wealth and a resource of the most amazing literature and ideas which have ever been expressed right down the histories and for the past couple of thousand years or more. Books can be of many different kinds. They can teach you everything about history, philosophy, science, religion, anything, mythologies. You know. Some of the best books, surprisingly, are literature for teaching. You can read good literature and you can gain a huge insight into human life, human relationships, political situations, the way the world actually works, your position within the world. And some truths can only be expressed in the form of literature. One of the great proponents of that was Eric Arthur Blair and otherwise known as George Orwell, who was one of the, the great English writers of the um, just post-war period, I suppose. I'm sure that you've heard of his books um, 1984 and the nature of the dystopian view that he had of the, the world and where he was heading. Many people think that we've arrived in 1984 already. But the book which I wanted to draw to your attention today and which will enable you not only to understand uh, something of human nature and also the political world in which you find yourself in through a simple fable and a, a fairy story, as it was called. Um, this book is called Animal Farm. It's, uh, it's a book I read when I was um, probably about 20 or so. Um, it's an easy book to pick up. I found this one. This is Penguin Classics. I found this one in a, um, a bookshop, Age UK, 99p it cost me. Full price, 5 99 I'm sure you can find it anywhere you like. It says that Orwell here was surely um, the most important work of political satire to be written in the 20th century Britain. It's one of the great modern political allegories and the story tells of innocence, of necessary revolution turning into dictatorship and betrayal and is not just striking as a political intelligence but as a fundamental modern myth. And um, Bernard Crick also says that almost certainly Orwell is the best polemical writer in English since Swift and he's moreover typically English in the way in which he writes. Um, this is a story of um, a farm, Mr. Jones's farm, and the animals decide that they're going to take over the farm and run it far better and far more fairly and far more honestly than Mr. Jones, who's a bit of a, a drunkard, ever could. And it shows the way in which they start off with good ideals and how those good ideals slowly shift and how they change and how they become corrupted and how they inevitably end up into a situation which is even far worse than Mr Jones ever produced himself. Let me read to you just the couple of opening paragraphs of the book to give you an idea of what it's like um, and how the story progresses. Chapter 1. Mr Jones of the Manor Farm had locked the hen houses for the night but was too drunk to remember to shut the pop-holes. With the ring of light from his lantern dancing from side to side, he lurched across the yard, kicking off his boots at the back door, drew himself a last glass of beer from the barrel, barrel in the scullery, and he made his way to bed, where Mrs Jones was already snoring. As soon as the light in the bedroom went out, there was a stirring and a fluttering all through the farm buildings. Word had gone round during the day that old Major, the prize middle white boar, had had a strange dream on the previous night, and he wished to communicate it to the other animals, and it had been agreed that they should all meet in the big barn as soon as Mr Jones was safely out of the way. Old Major, so he was always called, though the name under which he'd been exhibited was Willingdon Beauty, was so highly regarded on the farm that everyone was quite ready to lose an hour's sleep in order to hear 
what he had to say. Well, you can read for yourself what um, old uh, Major had to say and how that led to their revolution. Four legs good, two legs bad. One of the classic statements within George Orwell. George Orwell, Animal Farm, highly recommended.